Hello everyone, it's the MI Gardener, and if you're not wondering already what two plastic cups, a sour cream container, a nail, a penny, and a dropper bottle have to do with this episode, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out. So like many people, I myself like to reuse and recycle. However, as I always talk about, I always like to reuse over recycle because it takes a lot less energy. But uh, you know, I don't like to make things cheap either. So it's kind of hard to make things that are good quality that are also reused. So let's get into what I have for you all that you are going to really, really love. Now this setup here is not really a setup. It's more or less a description of the common method that people choose and the method I'm going to show you. So a lot of people tend to just take the, the plastic cups here and they'll, they'll tip them upside down. They'll tip them upside down like this and uh, they'll take a hammer and they'll, they'll take a nail and they'll just go like this. Well, what just happened there? First of all, that was not acting. You just saw that happen. That just completely broke the cup. So um, let's try to fix that back for, you know, let's just try to, let's try to get this working here. Okay, that's not working out so well. Yeah, you know what? Um, that's not working out really well. Let's just try to poke it. Let's just try to, let's just try to poke it and not stab our hand. Okay, that was almost stabbing my hand. That was pretty dangerous, uh, but we got the hole in. So we got the holes done and it seems pretty effective. We got the holes in aside from, you know, assuming you could do it cleanly without massacring the edges, making it look all rough and, and kind of scraggly and recycled. Uh, you, got, you got the holes done. Good, right? Wrong. Wanna know why? I'll show you why. Let me just rip this open and I'll try to show you what I'm talking about. So I've taken off the bottom of the cup here. I've just simply ripped it off. And what you see is what you would see on the inside of the cup. See those holes there? They leave those little punctures. There's the bottom. But they leave these little, these little punch-ups right here. And a lot of you might not be thinking that that's a problem. However, what I'm gonna show you is why that's a problem. And water has high surface tension, meaning that uh, just because it's on a flat surface, does not mean it's going to just drain through these holes. You're gonna get, if you water a lot, it's gonna rain, it's gonna run through these holes. But what you don't know is that these holes are preventing it from draining completely. And so that's a problem because water will set in your soil, even if it's a little bit. That little bit can prevent the soil from drying out to its best of its capabilities. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this penny, it's a very classic science experiment, come on in close, and I'll show you just the power of surface tension so you can exactly see what happens here when you have all these little push up, these little, um, these little push things that come up from the nail. So let's see just how many drops of water it takes for it to mound over on this penny. One, two, three. Place your guesses in the comments box below. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 13, 14. All right, now I'm not gonna go any further because I'm gonna show you one thing. The water has actually mounded up three to four times as tall as the original penny was and that's just from that little ridge on the edge of the penny. So we're gonna put one more drop in and see what that does. Whoop. Still is surviving, look at this. Oh, still there, that's 15 drops. 16, 17, oh my goodness, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Oh, and it finally ran off. See that right there? 
it finally ran off the penny. 24 drops. So if you haven't mutilated your cup already and made it a total mangled mess or made some punch holes that will hold water probably three to four times what uh, you'd normally expect, that water is going to sit in your soil. It won't evaporate. And what it's going to do is it's going to cause dampening off. And dampening off is a very, very common problem that people have when starting seeds. And people wonder, well, my seedling started out so healthy and then it just got really skinny at the, at the base of the plant and just fell over. What happened? Or, oh my goodness, my seedling sprouted, but it's just super weak and it just looks like it's dying and it can't get the seed coating off. All of that can be caused from dampening off. It can happen to any seedling that you start and that's from too much water. And that's because the, the soil does not have a chance to dry out. First off, you're gonna to wanna to start with a very well-draining soil. If you start with something that has a lot of perlite in it and a lot of sand, um, a very nice particle makeup, it's gonna drain very freely. And I have a video on that as well. And so if you wanna check that out, you can check right over here uh, and I'll have a link to that video because I think that having a good seed starting mix is also a great part of having successful seedlings. So with that aside, now you're probably wondering, okay, Luke, so I see what you're saying about how that can A, look terrible because you can't use that for more than one season. Also, another thing is what happens after you, after you use this? Sure, you can use it again because it doesn't actually break down, but look, you wanna take the seed out, you take the seed out, you gotta, you gotta squeeze this, Okay, you do this, you do this back and forth. As you can see, after three years or so, you're gonna most likely never be able to use this. Sure, you'll be able to use it for one, maybe two years, but when you squeeze it, it doesn't really return back to its original state. Because of the fact that it's polystyrene, it's a lot more rigid of a plastic. And also, there's a lot less uses for this once you're done using it. So. Uh, if you're going to be reusing, over recycling, this is actually not that good of an option because of the fact that they're very readily accessible. Sure, you can use lots of them, but in terms of reusing, they're recyclable, yes, but there's not many uses for them at the recycling plant. Polystyrene usually turn into styrofoam and whatnot. Um, not, not very many uses. But on the other hand, right here, polypropylene. You can check on the bottom. It says PP. This is polypropylene. Polypropylene has very good memory. And boom, there you go. <laughs> so polypropylene has very good memory. It's not gonna cause holes like the polystyrene. The polystyrene is very rigid plastic when it's formed in plastic cups. So you're gonna have uh, holes that will form after you're done. See those, all that white stress? Don't look at me, focus on the cup. All that white stress. That white stress will form cracks and holes. You water, it's gonna pour out of there, it's gonna make a mess. So, what I have here is a sour cream container. And that is because they are tall, they have great memory, so when you go to transplant your plant, you gotta squeeze it, it's gonna bounce right back. It does not stress the plant. Now, another thing to prevent this from happening, that, remember that? Remember how bad that was on the penny? You don't want dampening off. You want a very clean hole so that water can drain freely through. A lot of you are probably wondering, well, how on earth am I gonna do that? Simply buy one of these. This right here is a 7 16 inch wood, it's a wood drill. Focus on that, not me. There we go, all right. So, you take that bit, stick it, there you go, now you can see it. Stick it like this, and it has this little, it has this little spear here. It has this little spear at the front, that spear, don't worry about it. It's gonna go right through. Simply take it, poke it in, and it's got these little teeth. I'll show you those little teeth, because I forget that too. It's got these little teeth right here and right here. Those little teeth are gonna make your hole. Simply take, simply take it and wind very slowly, and it's gonna groove out a very, beautiful, neat hole. 
pull it out. And you have this little mini washer-like thing made of plastic. And you have a very, very neat hole without any rupturing. And then you just do it again. And again. And now you have three beautiful holes. You can do four, you can do five, it does not matter. Because the fact these are coming out. And then when you open them up, look in the bottom, there is no mounding. There will be no mounding of the water. It will not hold water more than the soil will. So any extra water will drain right out of the bottom. So that's about it here on the MI Gardener channel. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, I hope you liked this episode. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this episode or other episodes, please post them in the comments box below and I'll answer them promptly. Also, if you would like to try out this method of starting your seeds in these awesome DIY containers, definitely take some pictures and post them. We have so many social media feeds now that if you are on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, you name it, we're on it. You can definitely follow us and share those pictures with us. We'd love to see them and check them out and grow with you. So, as always, this is at my garden reminding you to grow big or go home, and I'll see you next episode. See ya. Bye.